Hello and welcome to another episode of Pain Nation. I'm Ken and let's dive on into our first story of the week. So under the absurd column, you might have heard that the DEA is focused on banning a substance known as Kratom or Kratom. I prefer Kratom, so that's what I'm going to use. Uh, Kratom is basically this compound made from the leaf of a Southeast Asian tree and people make tea with it and other things and a lot of people have found relief from chronic pain by using it with very few side effects. People also use it to treat things like PTSD, fibromyalgia pain, even depression. Some people have even been able to get off opioids completely by using Kratom. And it doesn't have nearly the side effects, if any, the side effects of, uh, of opioids. And you know, I'm a proponent of using opioids to control pain, but I am aware that there are problems with it, that there are side effects, there are things you have to be cautious about when you're taking them. And Kratom doesn't seem to have any of that. So you would think that anything that could get the general public off of opioids would be welcomed with open arms by people like the DEA, but that of course is not the case. So what do they use to justify them making this a Schedule One substance just like heroin? Well, they keep referring back to a study done by the CDC, you know, <clears throat> our good friends at the CDC there. Uh, they did a study that tracked from 2010 to 2015 uh, the number of calls to poison control centers all across the United States involving kratom ingestion and the big number that they came up with was 660. 660 over five years. That's not really anything, especially if you consider that just from January this year to August, there have been over 7,800 calls to poison control centers all across the U.S. for kids eating those little detergent pods that are so bright and shiny and fun looking. And yet, they're not banned. Maybe they should be. I mean, 7,800 versus 660, it's not even a contest. So again, this is really just an overreaction, the same as it has been with the DEA on the subject of opioids. And they'll also trot out statistics of deaths related directly to kratom ingestion, but when I googled around, I couldn't find anybody who had died while only taking Kratom. The people who did die with Kratom in their system are also taking other medications. And it's really unclear as to what the cause of death was. But considering, again, couldn't find anyone who just died from ingesting only Kratom, it seems to me it's pretty unlikely that Kratom has killed anybody. And we're talking worldwide. I couldn't find any records. Maybe I'm blind. I don't know. I really don't understand the DEA's position on this. I do know that they've had to kind of walk back what they've said as far as a timeline goes for banning Kratom for making it Schedule 1. It was supposed to happen today on the 30th. And it hasn't actually taken effect. One of their spokespersons uh, was going on record to say that it will eventually be banned. They just don't have a specific date any longer. And we can thank the surprising amount of media attention that this received. Uh, if not for that, I, I think it would be a done deal already. According to them, it's still going to be a done deal, but there's been at least uh, a partial reprieve in the short term. So. so that was kind of serious. Let's go to our happy place now. I ran across this story that I don't know how I missed back in August, but it's really cool. Uh, in New York State, the New York State Office of Temporary and Disability Assistance, it's a weird name, isn't it? It doesn't really roll off the tongue very well. Uh, they set aside $8.2 million to help people with their legal fees associated with appealing 
their denial of federal Social Security disability benefits, which is fantastic. That's great news. New York State recognizes that if you're applying for Social Security disability, you're going to get denied and not everybody has the resources to fight that, to go through the process. 8.2 million is not a small amount and it's being divided up amongst about 11 different groups. I did finally find a list of all the organizations in New York State that have uh, received you know, parts of this funding and I'll put that list down below in the video des uh, description box. So if you're in New York State, this is good. It means that you have options now where you don't have programs like this in every other state. We certainly don't have anything like that here in Nevada, I can tell you that. So that was inspiring, that was encouraging to me. Uh, so I just wanted to, to share that with you and certainly good news for anyone who's caught up in the quagmire of applying for any kind of social security uh, disability benefit. So that's great. And last, introductions. Each week on this program I'm going to introduce you to a program or a website or a person that I think you might want to become familiar with. And this week I'm going to encourage you to go to kaleidosninja.com. You heard me, Kaleidos Ninja. That's what she goes by. Her name is Amber Elder. She has ulcerative colitis but she also advocates for people with other inflammatory bowel diseases like Crohn's. She is a very talented illustrator. She does little cartoons that explain different parts of what ulcerative colitis is, but you only see those if you subscribe to her Facebook page and you uh, are on her newsletter for her website. So she came up with an idea to illustrate and, and write a graphic novel about ulcerative colitis. Take a look at this. It's going to be called Guts of Fury, and I think it's a fantastic idea. This is going to educate people in a very fun way about what this disease is, about all, the, all that comes with it and everything you go through suffering with it, and I think it's just fantastic. If you follow her uh, over on Instagram, she will occasionally give you a little screenshot of some of the panels that she's drawn this week. And it's due to come out next year, 2017, and she is taking pre-orders. So you can go to her website and sign up. I would encourage you to do that. And she's just a really nice person. I've talked to her before on a couple of my shows. And she's a sweetheart. And it's worth your time. Check her out. And speaking of time, that's all the time we have this week. I'll go ahead and let you go. If you don't want to miss any of my videos, I would encourage you to go ahead and go to my YouTube channel and hit that subscribe button. And then like the video while you're there, because why not? And, you know, share it around. You can also follow me over on the usual social media sites like Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and Pinterest. Or you can just go to my website at don'tpunishpain.com. And finally, if you like what I do and you want to help me make more of these videos, a contribution is always welcome over on my Patreon page. Uh, every bit helps, and I do appreciate everyone who's already gone over there and pledged their support. I think it's three people, <laughs> but I'm still psyched. That's really cool. As always, until next time, I'm Ken McKinn. You take care.